Just 10 kilometers outside of Luderitz, there is a ghost town of Kolmanskop, a forgotten diamond mining town. Diamonds were discovered here in 1908, and hordes of prospectors descended on the area. I can't put my finger on how, how it feels, other than it's like eerie, how you can see what life was, and now it's all gone. Nature's taking everything back over. Life has continued on without it. By 1912, a town had sprung up, producing a million carats a year or 11.7% of the world's total diamond production. There is a smell, that's for sure. But it didn't last. Intensive mining depleted the area by the 1930s, and the town's fate was sealed when the richest diamond fields ever known were found on the beach terraces to the south. The townspeople left in droves, in abandoned homes and possessions. Just think all the dates that happened here, all the, all the fights, the start of the good times, the end of the good times, thinking that you're gonna make it rich, trying to pay off debts, and so you found yourself here. It's been fun to chase Eli around too. Can you imagine being a 13-year-old kid, being able to go and explore this place? I'm sure this is 10 times cooler than it is for, even for me, just because of your imagination when you're a kid. It's so fun to watch. It's really fun to travel with your kids and watch them in this stage of life, because they won't be there for long. Walking through these ruins is a reminder that time marches forward with or without you. So we better make the most of it while we have it. X Overland's Africa Expedition is proudly presented by General Tire and the X3 Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And season six is brought to you by the X Overland Network, proudly supporting the best stories possible for the Overland community. And by our official apparel provider, Vertex. We leave Coleman Scop and head south towards our final border crossing of the trip. But before we leave Namibia, we acquire enough fuel for up to five days since we'll be hitting another stretch of remote trails. Simba's up. Next stop, South Africa. <laughs> That's, look at the rear view mirror. <laughs> look at that, in the rear view mirror, you got a hymns box. Wow. Gotta go check out of Namibia. Yeah, this border crossing is an important one because if we miss it, we've got two days of waiting because the border closes on the weekend. The border goes without a hitch, and we are able to enter South Africa without issue. I guess that's it. That's it. A few more pages of our carnet books are gone, and that's a great feeling. Woo, what a beautiful thing to accomplish today. And so tonight, we get to celebrate Richard's birthday, which is just fantastic. It is fantastic. I've modified my request for, oh. for dinner tonight. What's the request for dinner tonight? Dehydrated meal of some sort. Yeah? yeah. Just so you can go to bed sooner? So we can all go to bed sooner? <laughs> hey, man, when you when you turn 40, you just know what you want. I want you know? some chili mac and cheese. Chili mac and cheese. With some sriracha. Every spoon. Dude, Done. we can make this happen. Very nutmeggy. Ah. It's good. It tastes like Christmas. Mm. That's gonna be great with coffee tomorrow. Perfect.
usually when the days get into the 40s, I start losing track of the days. We uh, did a round the room group survey this morning. <clears throat> Everyone is just kind of struggle busing and everyone's just like, ooh. Richard and I were seven. You were six. And a half. And a half. Cyrus was a six. Torvi was a four or a five. He's dealing with a back pain. So everyone is just like, boo. And we think it's coming off of a big, two, two big days of, of distance and travel, seeing cool things, and then crossing a border, and then landing here, and then it just kind of this creates a sense of, <sighs> and then now we're like, okay, now we're gonna start the longest off-road track in South Africa, which is really cool, but at the same time, it's like, <sighs> okay, we gotta start the longest off-road track in South Africa. Namakwa 4x4 Eco Trail offers both the challenge and the reward that makes it the ultimate trail for nature enthusiasts and 4x4 drivers in South Africa. The route is over 600 kilometers long, and you will negotiate gravel, sand, rock, and travel ancient riverbeds and mountain passes. All the camps are bush camps with no bathrooms, taps, or electricity. Therefore, you need to be totally self-sufficient. All right. Nothing to it but to do it. We have all been looking forward to this trip and a point of reflection above the Orange River is important so that we don't outrun our adventure. We need to lock in our mindset so that we can capitalize on our last couple wow. weeks of the trip. That's pretty cool. That's super cool. The border is in the middle of that river. Wow. So this side is? South Africa. South Africa, and that side? Is Namibia. That is your past. This is your future. But right here is, is the, the present, now. is the now. Let's go find out what's next. That's the best part. If the trail is like this, this is awesome. I was thinking the same thing. I like it. I think there's a two track here to the right if you turn hard, yep. The trail disappears right away. Windmills are one of the only visual references of the way. Yeah, it looks like the road, as you saw, look, went straight up, but it's all grown in, filled in, huh? Yeah, there are zero tracks in front of me. The way forward is this ancient riverbed. The rainy season in South Africa extends until roughly April. And we are now firmly in the dry season. Months of rain and epic flash floods have erased the trail along this riverbed. So we need to get creative. Yeah, best I can tell, it just follows the wash up there. That's, I mean, there's no visual tracks. This is different. Ash is gonna get out and, and scout this. We may have to go back. After brief discussion, there is no real option to back out of this trail. We have to work through it. Do we need to go back up there? Mm, let's see. I think it was pretty much along this riverbed for a real, like quite some time. We decide to keep pushing, and Ashley finds her best guess as to the trail's direction. Looking good. Coming up on your first big rock, driver. Yep. All right, you can start cutting. Yep, uh, passenger's gonna go over a rock, and down, nice. Within an hour, our heads are back in the game. Time to tackle the unknown the way we do, onward, despite the team not feeling their best physically. Okay, your rear driver's about to hit that big white rock. Okay, your rear is going over a rock. Looking good, looking good, easy peasy. 
we need to take on all of this methodically. There are only support elements on the other side of this trail. The only thing behind us is the border, which we can't go back through. Oh, oh, what do you think? Locker or traction control? Uh, well, I like traction control. All right, traction control it is. You're gonna stay to the left. I'll guide you in. All right, now we're gonna turn hard driver. There we go. He's coming up on driver right there. Perfect, coming down. Straight now, hard passenger. There it is, there it is. Get your trailer's coming up now. Right on. Nicely done. Woo! Sweet! All right, Shell. Sweet. All right, looking good. Yep. If your line is right here, then want to come straight up this right here. Good, good, good. About to come up on drive. Passenger there. Okay, looking good. A little more passenger. That's good. Nice and straight right there. Slow. There you go. Yep. We will need to go to traction control. Yeah, nicely done. Sweet. Good, good. All right. Now to wherever the trail takes us now. that must have come through here is pretty intense. There is a big huge green rain tank over there that's washed into the, the river there. <laughs> Ashley, are you sure you're not taking us in circles? I see the same windmill over there. <laughs> These windmills are critical to the area's agriculture. They pump water from deep underground to feed livestock. And if necessary, we may need to pull water from these and filter if we have water issues. The river bottom in places is very soft, and I take a river bank a little too slowly. I have sunk the so sequoia. I'll just spin in the whole axle. She's stuck. She's a little stuck. All right, I'll stay in this mode. I'm going to just try backing up a little bit. No. You're a little high centered. Way high centered. Okay. Ryder, throw some Max Tracks under this car. I love these mirrors, these cameras under the mirrors, because I can see people in the front, off the side. I have total situational awareness. It's really nice when you've got people working around the car like this not the right spot to have something stupid or a stupid accident happening. All right, here we go. Here we go. Sweet. Love it when a plan comes together. Nice. Thanks, guys. Yeah, leave them out until Tundra gets up. If you're here, make a road. Ready. And yank him out, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Stack them and rack them, boys family that recovers together, stays together. I am pleasantly surprised with this trail. This is a blast. I think maybe the best trail we've been on so far. Yeah, I, Tundra agrees, uh, especially for scenery. It's really amazing. And it was nice to put the trucks in four low for a minute. And to be honest, um, I had you know, pretty low expectations for the day. I thought we'd just kind of cruise into camp over 80 clicks. Uh, pretty quickly, but it 
took us all day. It's 5 o'clock right now, p.m. Yeah, it's, it's the right amount, you know, like good track, some getting stuck, beautiful scenery, learning some stuff. It's great. I'm loving it. Good pick. All right, Ellen, I'm looking forward to chores and camp, just tinkering around and going to bed. I'm, I'm loving sleeping too out here because these days are so full. It's a good day. Dinner time, fuel time, camp time. We've got corn, carrots, chicken, potatoes, broth. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. It's excellent. It's fun to go out, explore, get stuck, and re we're in the middle of nowhere of South Africa. Like this is the far corner of nowhere, so life couldn't get any better right now. It's great. And hot soup on a cold night with a fire going. Dude, come on. So cozy. On the flip side, Torfi is getting worse. He's freezing and achy. A slight worry of malaria symptoms has crept in. We will keep monitoring Torfi throughout the night, but getting to the other side of the trail is the real solution. Day 47, getting up, getting running. Feels really good to be out on the trail. When it comes to just relaxing, seeing the backcountry, enjoying the trucks, enjoying the, the company, the team, and enjoying what we do with X Overland. So the next few days should be pretty good. I also hope that the vehicles and the trailer not gonna cause us any problems or the trail is not gonna cause us any problems for the equipment. Uh, Ashley, could you give us the breakdown on today, what it looks like? You bet. We have around 80 kilometers to our next camp, which is an established camp site. Uh, I'm not too sure of the difficulty of this section, um, so we'll have to see what the day brings us. The good thing is, is the trucks seem to be running good. We got a bunch of stuff tightened up. Put a little fuel in Sequoia so we can go the whole way. Um, before we go all the way, I'm just going to stop for one second. This Tacoma's got a little bit of a knock happening from the back somewhere. Copy that. Full stop for a knock. Roger, copy. I heard a little knocking coming from this. Ooh, that's been that way for a while. Okay, we need to look at this side and then look at the other side because I've had a bad, my first Tacoma had this happen. And this was caught way late in the game and it eroded the plastic out and you couldn't get it any tighter. You had to completely remove the bed. Definitely a stop and fix. Yeah, it's accessible from inside. It's just the bed bolt because we gotta get all the way into this back corner where those batteries are. We can get to it. It's just way back in there. If that eroded out, like, then we'll have to shim it. We'll have to figure out how to put shims in there. Since Torfi is down for the count, Richard and I tag in to tackle the fix. This is when how you build your truck matters. Fixes are inevitable for every overlander. And 45 days in of brutal roads, things are bound to show up. So build your vehicle in a way that you can pretty easily break it down and rebuild it. Awesome. While we're fixing one here, we decide it's necessary to tighten all of the bed bolts, forcing a full bed deconstruction. We can get to this one easily. Good thing experience has taught us to build it right. Truck tear down. 
Okay, go ahead and shake it. Shake it up. Yeah, so that's all attached together. That's good. The bed material has been worn down, so we just need to shorten the collar and retighten the bed to take out the gap. Should be good as new. I am 110% confident that this will work. By the way, this is also most likely a problem due to our own doing. We have removed this bed a couple of times over the years for different reasons, and we may have missed torquing it correctly. Details matter when it comes to truck builds. Toy, toy. Doing well. Oh man, those are taking turns. Oh, baby. Okay, that's it. Flip the latch. Okay, latched in. The bed is tightened. Shorten the shim, tighten the bolt. Now the bed doesn't rock, can't erode anymore. Got some cleaning done while we were there. Got a couple bolts tightened up. Fridge is locked back in. Ready to rock. The wildflowers are in full display. This is one of the best blooms in years, according to locals. And it's got a great feeling about it, especially after being in the stark desert for a month. It's amazing how the train can change so quickly. Our focus is on Torfi getting better. Anytime a team member goes down, we try to accommodate in any way possible to help them recover. Ashley, how many clicks to count? 3.4, yay! This place seems like exactly what we need right now. It's nice and cool, has a relaxed vibe, so everybody can get some rest and get ready for the next day, so. Just pulling into this camper right by the Orange River. It's a much bigger river than I expect on the map, it's this big. In person, it's at least 100 and something feet across, at least in this spot. I, I was expecting a wild camp tonight, but we pushed a little bit further so that uh, Mr. Torfi could have uh, some good solutions here as he's still dealing with gut problems. But we're all gonna benefit from it because they have, there's a bar. It's like this oasis in the middle of the desert. As we get close to the end of, of shooting a series and the end of an expedition, I get a lot more relaxed. And I wish it was different than that. I wish I could be this way the whole time. But I think as expedition leader, you, you carry a lot of the weight. You know, as a director to make a film, and then making sure that the trucks stay safe and the people stay safe, and it's just a lot. So as we get to the end here, I always, <sighs> some of the pressure in that regard comes off, and I actually have the most amount of fun towards the end of expeditions in different ways. And uh, that's already the case here, but I'm gonna channel my state of mind into just enjoying more and more of these boys just helping shape them the last, just, just give it the last bit I can before we all head home and back to school, back to life. There's a very small, sweet window right here that I need to capitalize on. It's not bad. It's, it's not, not bad. bad, okay. There was a flood here about a month ago. Well, what that means is that the two or three camps that we've decided on are washed out. They don't exist full anymore? Of rocks. Yeah, <laughs> so you can't necessarily get to them. My thought is to try to make it through. Mm -hmm. Still try to do the longest trail in South Africa. Good. That just might mean a turnaround of some kind. Mm -hmm. They're eating. We're in for the unknown, because mm. <clears throat> having these two campgrounds washed out, it changes the pace of what we, what we intended to travel. But this is, this is how overlanding goes. This is just normal. Um, we adapt. We have to adapt. You have to hold all this stuff loosely, and this is just nature that has wiped out our plans, literally. 
I think we can still tackle most of this trail. It'll look different than we intended, but then we'll just capitalize on the opportunity and check some other stuff out because of it. We're at the mercy of the land and what it does and our fuel ranges and how much food we have and the morale of the team and the energy levels and factor all that in and keep going till the very end. This is amazing, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Well, good morning, day 48. It was a great night for most of us, not all of us. Torvi didn't sleep very well past one. Ashley didn't sleep very well. She's also going under the weather a little bit. How did you sleep? Uh, I slept mildly. Mildly. So the team is just kind of, Hopefully Torvi and Ashley begin to feel better today because it is a long day. We've been doing 80 kilometer days the last two days. Today is a 140 kilometer day. 60 more. Whew, it's almost twice. Mm -hmm. So we gotta get going. Yep. We just need a day where nothing breaks. Okay, here's your daily update. As Clay said, we have around 140, 145 kilometers to do today. Um, camp will be to be determined. We'll see what the status of some of the uh, camps are that have reportedly been washed out, but we might have to make our own camp today uh, when the time is right. In the midst of the slog, it can feel hard to realize what's what you're doing. And just recapping that we're doing something very cool that is hard and it'll be with us the rest of our lives. We just have a few more days. Got to keep soaking it up, doing our best, which we all are, and uh, make a great long-term memory out of it all. This is a quiver tree, and I think it's aptly named. That uh, is just a cool tree in yeah. the middle of nowhere. It's been there for a long, long time, obviously, but even people have, for probably 100 years, circled around this thing. This is gorgeous. This is fantastic. Our campsite that we want to stay at tonight is said to be washed away but we're going to investigate for ourselves. It would be nice to be on the river tonight. So this is why you go and check things out for yourself, because sometimes you'll be pleasantly surprised and check this place out. Being great. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting my strength back. Mm. Nice. Mm -hmm. It is nice. <laughs> the boys are tasked with refueling the trucks. Torfi and I will supervise, but I think they're ready for the job. critical tasks early is important. It's amazing what they are capable of if given the chance. There you go. That's insane how that works. It's so cool. cool. Just stand there as low as you can. Mm, smells good. Love it. Go. We're racing. Go, go, go. <laughs> we thought we were alone in camp tonight, but across the river is a a lot of baboons. They just spawn. And if they stay over there, it's okay. <laughs> but if there's some over there, that means there's some here. Baboons can just wreak havoc on your camp. 
Eli spotted some baboons across the river and there's a lot of them and they are slowly making their way this way. Hopefully they stay on their side of the river and we'll stay on ours and it will all be, we'll all live happily ever after. But we're gonna keep an eye on them. <laughs> I blame you. The sun's going, you can feel it. Enjoy it, there it goes. Day 48. This one's been a lot more effort. Effort put into everything. We'll look back on this trip and be like, that was the best trip we've ever been on. Cause it's the hard stuff, the challenges of it all, even though it's not all fun when you're in it, you know, cause you're dirty, you're sweaty, you stink. You've been in the camp for all that time, you know? And I think that's gonna make make our memory and the recall of this trip that much better. I feel like it's gonna be tough. Huh, pretty much worked. That's pretty stinking thawed. We're gonna go with it. All right, night. Moving on. Nights don't get much better. Roasted chicken, steak potatoes, mushrooms, a fire, a river. Amazing. Doesn't get much better than this. Man, might be the last night on this trail for us. The other washed out camps really, in some ways shortened the trail, but I'm glad we made it to this one. Mm -hmm. With a little time on our hands, Richard and I have another challenge ahead for the boys. Oh, he's getting stuck. They have been asking about winching, and so we decide to answer their question with a hands-on class. <laughs> Yay. Is he trying to get out or just get more stuck? There is a stuck truck right there. Thank you, Richard. I didn't Richard. Want to get too mired, just mired enough. Okay, for your training purposes, I mean, this is a heavy truck that's completely mired deep, right? Yeah. What, what is probably the best and safest tool? Winch, a shovel. A winch. Yeah. You're gonna need a shovel. You'll need max tracks, because all those things work together really well. But the main tool today is going to be a winch recovery. Single line pull it is. That's your plan? Yeah. Let's do it. Yep. There's a lot of tension on this to keep it tight, so sometimes they're a little tough. You'll know if it's free, because you'll be able to pull that. Pull! Good. Yep, it's free spooling. Okay. That's a dirty rope. Uh-oh. What did we find out? We got too much. Well, we got a lot more line, right? Yeah. But we need that amount of line pulled out to make the winch work. So what should we do? Pull the car forward. There we go. Pull the truck forward. This is safe to put on here because this has a radius end. Do you feel how this is smooth? Mm -hmm. It has a curve to it. If that was sharp, you wouldn't do that. Cut the rope. Because it will cut the rope. The force is so great, it'll just cut right through it. Soft shackle. Soft shackle. And that's made of a, a material called uh, Spidera. Spidera. It's a synthetic line that is as strong as steel. Oh, wow. But it is light and movable and great. Mm. Yep. Okay, yep. that's good. Okay. Okay. You don't want to hook down. You want to hook up. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yep, how come? Because then it catches that lip. No. Or because of it. Yeah, so you're going to go in here like this. Okay. And the idea is 
if this were to fail, what would it do under a heavy, heavy working load? Um, go down when it would break? Boom, go into the ground. If it was like this and it failed, what would it do? Shoot up. Shoot up, right? <laughs> so even on here it says, opening faces upward. That's safe. And that's why they have this awesome spring-loaded clip in here. Because it'll keep it hooked up, right? Yes, sir. There you go. This is going to be your winch control line. Then, is that truck ready? You ready? Going to give them the sign to winch in. Winching is one of those things like a medical scenario. Let's back up a little bit. It's best to practice without the stress of the real situation before being put into one. Yeah, you're coming out. And remember, generally, when you get stuck, now it's not an emergency. Remembering that can be half the battle sometimes. And I think recoveries are a ton of fun. It's just a puzzle that needs to be solved. Okay. Nice. Now take uh, release tension. Perfect. All right, the track should be fairly uh, obvious for the next 10K or so. So we'll just roll and then there's a right hand turn, but I'll let you know when we get there. Ryder has really come around on this expedition. He's been driving constantly and consistently. And today, I give him the opportunity to lead the convoy by himself on the trail. Hey, Tacoma, go ahead. We're going to get back into convoy order. So Tacoma lead, then Sequoia, Tundra will bring up the rear. This is his first glimpse of what his future freedom could look like. And I'm proud of him. He would like you to, to discuss the meaning of the word overlanding. I think the meaning of overlanding is to Prepare and plan your trips wisely to have all of your stuff that you need and then go out into the world with your big truck and explore all you can and see what you can and then brag about it to everyone you My meaning of overlanding is to just get yourself out there. You don't have to be in like a truck. Just go out and explore the world and just, just go out there and just be who you are out in the wild. That was pretty great. I was not expecting that answer. <laughs> a writer or me? A writer. <laughs> Dang it. We have just entered the Mapua National Park, and so after I've been through the, the dust and the desert, we're heading to the coast. Today, we will come off the Eco 4x4 trail and divert to the coast. It's a couple days away, and the weather appears to be better there. Engage mode push. A day later, we arrive back on the west coast of Southern Africa. And we have stumbled upon one of the largest colonies of fur seals. These guys are pretty incredible. They are large climbers despite their fins, and at sea, they are known to travel large distances. Oh, wow. As much as 80 kilometers a day and they may spend months offshore where they're able to dive to over 200 meters in search of food. And there is another incredible thing about this location here, and it's not very appealing. I thought it smells like a, uh, like a seafood feedlot, cattle feedlot. I said it smells like the dump, but a hundred times worse. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, it's bad. Uh-huh. You can taste it. Yeah. It's... Man. I don't know how to they describe it. They sound like it. goats. Yeah, they sound like sheep or goats or something. Pleasant place. Let's see why they hang out here. It's all pretty cool, but we are compelled to head upwind before we camp for the night. Nothing better than the beach after some big days on the road. Ashley has found just the spot about 10 kilometers down the beach. Holy cow. Wow. So pretty. This is beautiful. It's going to be windy. She lit. <laughs> After 
after months on the road, we've refined our systems to a Formula One pit crew for camp. It's pretty cool. This spot smells much better than the seal colony today. That was, I have to make sure my jacket didn't absorb the stench. Torvi dives into some more camp fixes from the last couple of days. Problem we have, the latch on the audio cap. Both of them broke on the Tundra. The idea is to use a small piece of wire from I don't know what, get like two of them. See if that would hold, at least on one side. Oh, I'm so happy you get to use the vice. <laughs> uh, just, you know, working on finding some ways to use it. The Tundra Alucab tent latches metal have finally fatigued out and broke. Now we need a creative fix. Something like this will be interesting to see how many kilometers can handle on African roads. Eli has been taking pictures throughout the trip, and this is very encouraging to me. It's so cool to see. You've really liked taking pictures on this, haven't you? Yeah. Pretty much what I've got. So keep, keep thinking about when you look around, what's what's the best subject? I see I see waves, I see splashing up into the rocks, right? Mm -hmm. I see a sun setting behind a cool bluff. Those could all be subjects, right? Yeah. So when you're looking for pictures, what do you want to show somebody? See that line? Yeah. And all that, and then when it splashes up, you can get, time it right and take a bunch of pictures, right? It's really cool that you've been working on this. I'm proud of his newest interest, father like son. But he does have some camp chores to get to tonight. The boys have been tasked with cooking dinner for the whole team, their choice. Eli, we're gonna go make a dinner plan. Let's go. What? We're gonna go make a dinner plan. The boys' plan is the Canadian craft dinner. And it's completely nutritious. I have perfected it. The extra cheese definitely looks way better. Which vegetables are we having with our craft mac and cheese? While Ryder and I wrap up our amazing pasta cheese and meat extravaganza, seeing vegetables, another sunset has crept up on us. Wow. That's incredible. That's a good one. That came out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely nowhere. Poof, another day. Yeah. Time flies. I love how Africa is still surprising us every day even this far into the trip. Uh, it's cool to start to see the end when you've been working towards it this whole time. And then at the same time, you're like, no, I'm not ready for it to be over. So I'm gonna be soaking it up, doing everything I can to soak up all the different things. You don't want to run to the end of the trip just to get home back to the life that you had previously been so excited to go leave and go on an adventure for. But at the same time, it's like you can't help but be winding down because you've, you've almost seen it all and done it all. I can't tell if that's the clouds or the ocean. At first it looks like the ocean. Yeah, it is the ocean, isn't it? This will be our last beach camp and final wild camp as we make our way to the most southern point of the continent tomorrow. And this spot has a special thing waiting for us. The flowers are next level. Something to a degree none of us have ever seen before. such a great moment. It's one of those moments you're like pinching yourself. You're like, is what I'm seeing actually real right now? Is this actually happening? And it was a memory I will remember for years to come. It smells so good. It smells like 
walking through a flower store with salty sea fresh air. I think it's one of the best things I've ever smelled. It's like instantly calming. <laughs> How's that? Good. That's good. Yep. Today feels like the last day of the trip. This feels just right. Bean, are you ready for an epic night of braai? Mm. I got am the, ready. You got the coals going, got the fire going? Yeah. We're gonna try and maximize all of our new skills. Yes, this is bread number four. This is gonna be the one. You know, just a couple of months ago, we had zero skills on cooking over the fire. And now, we're crushing it. I can't wait to do more of this at home. That is redonkulous. Look at that slab. Right? That is a slab of meat. This is what I call steak. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of elephant is this? Uh, it's the foot. It's foot. This brie, bread, meat, can't ask for more. This will be the ultimate bride night. There you go. Dinner time! And it tastes amazing. What else we got here? We got the steak. We got the steak. 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 Did you say there was cheese in this actually? Yeah, but I made a, a special one. Oh. This is better than any restaurant. Oh, yeah. In uh, South Africa or Africa in mm -hmm. total. So, we only have about five more mornings of closing all these tents down. How I feel about that is I'm kind of excited to not do this one anymore after a while, but this one always gets kind of stuck. But not everything has been completely refined after a couple months on the road. In a way, it's perfect, and it's not perfect. If I can get down. Yeah. We're uh, still learning some stuff. Set down number 42. I think. Darn it. There's a lot of footage. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Well, today's been a struggle. <laughs> but we're now yeah. all done. <laughs> With the ocean fog starting to roll into camp, it's time to depart for the most southern point, Cape Agulhas. I think we can make it to Cape Town if we work together as a team for optimal time management. Roger that. So that looks like fast fuel stops, mode push, with 90-minute pushes with a five-minute break, etc. Oh, yeah. Right now, we've got about 387 clicks to Cape Town, and we are looking for some place to land. So when we have that place settled, we will let y'all know. It will take us two days to reach this iconic point on the map, both geographically and for the expedition. Funny how quickly a trip goes from you're all talking about the first, like first sunset in Botswana, first sunrise, etc., to the last. We're now at the last section of the trip. So our last time on dirt, our last time at the coast. It's kind of sad and it's fun. It's fun because you earned it. You've earned the right to say that. You know what you've been through, but it's sad because that means it's the end. And with that, in a bittersweet moment, we leave the dirt track for the last time. From here on, it's the tar road to Joburg. Probably the last time we were up.
50 PSI. It's the highest PSI we've been on since we left Johannesburg. Did you need a rotation? That's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Think about it. They warned us. They were like, you need, you only have three spare tires, you're going to need more than that. <laughs> we've been on dirt for six weeks, so I'm kind of ready to not do this anymore. <laughs> and the pavement's going to be great. I love coming into these places. There's just some sort of a feeling that kind of like comes up when you're reaching the end of a place. I don't know, I just have this swell. Yeah, it definitely has a almost finality to the end of a road. Thank you for putting trust in me to lead you most of the way here. Uh, with the final few days by Rochelle. So thanks for trusting us to get everyone here in one piece. Very exciting. You're welcome. Excellent job. Arriving at Cape Agulhas is an overlander's bucket list item. Wow, that is awesome. And as we approach the point, we witness a large scale map of the entire continent of Africa. As we stand at the southern end of the map and point out the journey that led us to this point, it's humbling to see how small of a section of the continent we traversed and how grueling and difficult this sliver of the map posed for us. Although we're at a symbolic ending to this trip, seeing this map invokes a longing for more travel in Africa in the future, beyond the enormous achievement that we have just unlocked. When you have some time to look at the map and look what you've done, you realize how much you actually did because a lot of the camps, a lot of the nights just get pushed out of your memory in the moment. Like when you're trying to sit here and recap everything that happened, it's almost impossible. It's a massive undertaking. I feel mostly relief, to be fair. Yeah. We're right at 10,000 kilometers of travel to get to this point, and it feels like 20,000 kilometers. And when we came here, we, we decided we wanted adventure, more rugged adventure, and we got it. And it was, it was perfect. And the 10,000 kilometers that we have driven, we earned every one of them. This hat was the very first XO hat I ever got. Took it to Baja with me, uh, Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, the northernmost you can drive in North America. Went to Anchor Point, the westernmost you can drive in North America. Went to Nordcap, the northernmost point you can drive in Europe. And now, what I've been excited for and the reason I brought this old hat on this trip is to make it to the southernmost tip of Africa. To me, that's special. <laughs> so the hat survived and maybe it will survive one more trip somewhere else in the world. Well, this is my third trip I've been on and each trip we've kind of hit a significant landmark. Right now I'm just finding some rocks and collecting water from the Indian Ocean to take home. This is a really awesome experience and the landscape around here is beautiful. Uh, it's a pretty awesome spot to be. Uh, my dad was saying this is a spot where lots of adventures end and lots of adventures start. So this trip, it's an end, but it could be the start to another adventure. We don't know. I'm so thankful that we got to do this with our boys as a family. It was one crazy adventure. The boys worked really hard. They did a really good job and I'm so proud of them. I think the boys did good. The boys did awesome. I think we all did good. I agree. Hopefully they want to come back on a trip. Yeah, <laughs> I think they do. This trip uh, will probably help me in the future overcome many things. So, I'm excited for the future, for what the future brings, and um, whatever challenges will come my way and, I, and however I push through them. I had a, I've always had a hard time speaking to people. Um, I'm not really sure why. I had a hard time speaking to the team, but now I get to share my thoughts and feelings. I feel respected enough to say things, and I definitely feel more confident to take on the world and what's next.
being part of a crew, it's such good, so good to learn like teamwork and how to be around each other and recognize when people are down. And uh, I'd say that's one of the most beneficial things in life is just being able to work with people because you'll do it your whole life. Okay, I think it's time. All right, time to roll. Time to roll. Johannesburg, let's go get these trucks packed up, ourselves yeah. packed up, and go home ish. See ya. You have to do the actual. Ashley wave. says it's time to go. We're always dealing with this uh, time factor. We have limited time. In the beginning, we think it's plenty. We can do whatever, we can do everything. When then you get there and you start traveling, then you realize it's, you know, not so much time. We could easily be here for one year. We have been saving something special for this last moment of the trip, and there is no better time Torby than now. Torby bought this in a gas station in Iceland and says you have to try it. It's Black Death, the original spirit of Iceland. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to the end of the earth. That tastes like <laughs> success. That was great. Remind me of good times at home. <laughs> and now, when I get home, Brenwin will, mind me, will sure remind me of this, the most southern tip of Africa. And now here, between the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic, we officially conclude this adventure. There you go. But don't be discouraged. There's more we have to do here in Africa. And it will be revealed to those who wait. Well, ladies, gentlemen, children, Canadians, Icelandics, and Americans, I really don't know what to say as we complete the loop, the biggest loop I've ever been on. It is a new record. It is also my longest trip on the expedition, so I'm super happy that I got to go on this trip, so thank you. You're welcome, man. Good job. Good job. I thank you guys for letting me be a part of this opportunity uh, and this amazing trip. I am so thankful for the team I've gotten to be with and all the problems we've all solved together and all the scenes we've seen. I'm so thankful that I've gotten to go experience all these brand new things and make me a better person. And I just thank you guys for all the snacks and uh, all the scenic routes and putting up with me and just being a wonderful team. Good job. Ryder for president. Yeah. He had me until the snacks part. Oh, but I love the snacks I did, but <laughs> I was like, that's so serious. Just one request. Next time I drive this Tacoma, can it have air conditioning? <laughs> Who knew that this is where our story would begin? and exactly how it would end. Nostalgia. Right? Count. Nostalgia. Oh, how that feels weird. <laughs> Been here before. <laughs> we did. You did. Good job. Thank you. Another one in the book. Yep. Thank everything you for else. everything. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Good job, Sai. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Thanks for your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> they always talk about the food. <laughs> and now it is time for something completely different. With our truck still in Africa, a new mission has been born and a whole new adventure awaits a group of guys that are in for a good time.
Join us in the upcoming Return to Africa expedition as we avoid life crisis and step into the unknown. The biggest question that we have to answer is will our love handles be here forever?